Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. Ben and Denise, and we are about to make a special trip. We're going to get something that I did not think we were going to be able to get our hands on. It's pretty exciting for us, and yes, that's the livestock box in the trailer, so gives you a hint where we're headed. <laughs> See you soon. All right, well, I told you we were on a special trip. Well, I'm here with Matt, and we are out picking up some sheep, but these aren't just any sheep. These are Katahdin, and they have come from Greg Judy. And you know, we went to the Greg Judy's grazing school, and it turns out Matt did as well. And what, uh, you know, any brief thoughts on, on uh, meeting Greg Judy? Or? Yeah, it was, a, it was a really cool experience. Um... He's a, a very humble, down-to-earth guy. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we were the last ones to get there. And uh, he, you know, instead of like, here's a sheep, just, you know, I'm gonna give you what I got. You know, he said, hey, let's, you know, what, what are you doing? Like, what, what's your arrangement? What are you looking for? Well, I was there to get a ram. So he was like, hey, come on in here and let's like, mm -hmm. let's find the best one. So, I mean, there he took go. his time and we really went through him and he's like, this one will be good for you. He asked about, uh, the forge that we had, um, how we planned on uh, rotating them, feeding them, mm -hmm. our location. So he took that all into account. Um, and then he spent a lot of extra time with me. He uh, told me about uh, the all the grazing principles. I'd read the books, but um, he, he was definitely an awesome guy. Very cool experience. Um, all the help there on the farm is very family oriented. So yeah. just a really wonderful day. So. Yeah. And he's a couple states away. So how did you find him? <laughs> My wife was like, hey, you want to raise sheep, you need to check this guy out. You know, he does things a little different. Um, we didn't want to do the, the typical feedlot. You know, that's the thing that's ruining the, the, whole, mm -hmm. uh, the whole food system in the world. It's, it's the yep. feedlot mentality. You know, uh, the, the animals need land. Um, before all these fences and domestication, they had the wild. So um we would kind of want to go back to that as, as close as possible so yep. and really it's just all about providing the best quality uh parasite resistant sheep we can naturally so well that sounds familiar oh yeah <laughs> that's, that's exactly how we wind up finding him same thing it's like well we've got this land and you know if we're worming our animals that worm warmer goes into the into the animal it's in the meat then we're ingesting it and i'd just rather not yeah absolutely but, and you know, we had this, we had thought about, you know, cows, everybody wants a cow, yeah. um, but they're, they're, you know, they're big animals, they're hard to handle, um, and, and sheep are just that nice in between. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, people will ask me, are your sheep mean? But they're not mean, they're just scared. Uh, so the more time you spend with them, you know, they become yeah. to, you know, you earn, they earn your respect to the shepherd and you earn their respect that these guys will move from paddock to paddock. They'll go through mud. I've heard people say that sheep won't go through water. They will. Um, over wooden bridges, it doesn't matter. So, you know, after you build that relationship, you know, sheep, shepherd. Um, and of course, with, with ours, we can do that being a little smaller place. So there's no commercial farming here. <laughs> no, no. And, and in our case, they follow Denise. She's the, she's the treat there person. They awesome. see her and they're yelling at her because they want their treats. Yeah. Me, I'm the heavy. I stand behind them and you get back in and they run. So, yeah nice balance with that but yeah and then as far as the uh, the meat goes you know people are like oh i don't like sheep most of those people have had wool sheep so it's got that lanolin it has a tangy yes. taste to it That's these guys true. amazing meat it's almost like eating steak so absolutely yeah. i would totally agree with that lamb you know a lot of people cook lamb they're like oh, i hate the smell it's terrible but yeah. if you've ever had a fresh lamb and you've ever had the pleasure of tasting that, it's a totally different experience, and I agree. It so. is. Do you do your own butchering, or do you take it somewhere? Uh, we do our own here. Do you? Okay. Yeah. So, we, we have done and, some you know, of that. I was new to that. Um, didn't grow up like that. You know? No. Yo. <laughs> Grew up in the suburbs, and then um, I'm craving That's... all of this, you know, the rest of my life. So, um, But the, the butchering process was one that, uh, 
you know, it, it's for some people it's tough to get over, but you realize the relationship and, you know, right. you see the commercial uh, butchery and, you know, once you see that, you're like, okay, you know, there's a, res a respectful way to do this. Exactly. You know, and a, and a kind way to, to relationship between the, the livestock and the human. So. It, it's the respect of the animal. Absolutely. I mean, same, same thing. You know, I was Absolutely. born and raised in Arizona. I've been, we've been out here for about four years. How, how long have you been doing this? Um, we've been doing this since 2021. So okay. just a couple of years, uh, but we, we took it serious, uh, didn't want it to fail, um, especially my wife. <laughs> you know, we're going to do something, we're going to do it right, and we're not going to fail. So, well, that doesn't you know. that sound familiar, Denise? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, doing the, doing the rotational yeah. grazing and uh, keeping them parasite-free is a lot of work. It's a lot of moving. Um, yeah. They can't stay in the same spot. You can't just have you know a pretty farm and kick your feet up, so it does require a lot right. of work and movement. And I'll bet you get a lot of the same thing we do, because the people that have been doing it the old, well, the, the new old way, way, the yeah. yeah, the the current traditional way, you know, just worming them and all that. They look at you like, what are you doing? You're nuts. You're out there moving them every day. I, you know, like yeah. you said earlier before we got on film, I enjoy being out here. I enjoy you know doing them. You know, no, yeah, the well, animals don't always want to agree with us what yeah. we want or they'll get out and there's mm -hmm. you know there's frustrations in it but you know yep. that's that's part of it if they so. survive in the wild without human intervention you know they can survive here exactly. as long as we create that sort of wild environment for them there you go <laughs> there you go plan. that's right exactly Absolutely. exactly so we're gonna uh, walk down and see the the two that we're taking and then maybe go meet daddy and just kind of mill around here so. So one of the things that we believe in too is the tree forage. There's a lot of nutrients in this. Oh yes. And they will eat it. So that's like a little treat for them. Hey guys. So like there's, they'll come and nibble and oh yes. eventually we'll, well all become friends. There's so. new people around so there's yeah. scary things. They still got all their good instincts. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Come on guys. It's okay. So I'll and, just leave this here yeah. and they'll, uh, they'll come over here and forage on that. Sure. And now how old are these two? So both of these guys were born uh, right around, so that would be right around the end of March. Okay. Uh, so right now, yeah, they're at about five months. So there they go. Won't there take go. long. <laughs> That's right. They love tree hay. Oh, we, yes. We make it for the winter, and then in the summer when the, the forage isn't so good in the field, we make sure they get plenty. So Yeah, they, they love the locust, um, poplar, maple, um, and of course the uh, the oak, yeah. and we definitely use the oak. It has an anti-parasitic properly yeah. due to the high tannins in it. And by the way, my wife feeds all this information to me so I can sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds familiar yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. So the, the brain's the brawn, right? That's, that's right. There yep, you go. That's how it works. Absolutely. That's quite all right. So, so we'll go down here and look at uh, the yeah. father, Mr. Dam. While we're going out, did you, uh, did you, do you have you, did you, were you raised in this area or did you move out here? Oh from? no, we're from South Georgia. South Georgia, okay, yeah. all right. Savannah, so you would think we'd be okay with all this uh, heat and everything, but we're, mm. it's, it's starting to get to me. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I so, get it. No, Everybody's... I came up, uh, I came up to this area with uh, work. I worked for the railroad, so. Oh, okay. I came up here in uh, about 2009. Right. So this is Missouri Mike. Missouri He's gentle. Mike, hi buddy. Everybody oh, says all rams are so aggressive. Oh, no. he's, he's you, not aggressive at all. You're handsome. Yeah, he does. You are very handsome. Hi, he's, buddy. Uh, he's just a year old. Okay. Hey. Yeah, you're beautiful. When do you normally start breeding your sheep? Um, so the ewes are already a year old. I gave them plenty of time to develop. Yeah. That's and what you were doing about a year old? Is that yeah. what you're doing? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, too young, and they're going to have a Hi. difficult birth. Yeah. And so all these ewes delivered, you know, in the field without intervention and all, you know, the births are successful. So, yeah, uh, that's, you know, I, I don't know why anybody would want to start it early. I know we get excited and the prospect and everything, but, sure. you know, timing is everything. And, yeah. you know, I sat there and listened to, you know, Greg say, you know, December 1st is when you put the ram in, you know. <laughs> and then, you know, the rest of the year you do have to separate them. So, 
Yeah. Um, also, those ewes are nursing right now. It takes a huge toll on their body uh, to nurse, especially the ones with twins. Yeah. Um, so the last thing we want is, you know, the ram interrupting anything. And we want to give them plenty of time to recover. So, yeah. And they definitely deserve it. So. Yeah. Our ram lambs in with our, uh, our, our buck, just separate. At least they've got company with each other. But right. know, we don't want them in with the girls right now. Exactly. So, so but he's been fantastic, uh, easy to work with, easy to move. He had a long trip all the way from Missouri, so um, yeah. But he's he's just been a fantastic ram. Um, Before we load her up, we're just checking her eyes. We're looking for pink, upper lid and lower lid. And we're looking for a Fomancha score, which is, it will tell us if there's a parasite load. I mean, the parasites will drain the blood out. And if their eyes are white, it means you might have a problem or a potential problem. And you can check and, gums too. Oh, we could check the gums too. That's true. But she's nice and pink, you can tell. She's like, what are you palpitating me for? You're beautiful. She's beautiful. She looks good. We're going to go load her up because her sister's calling for her. Yeah, going oh, okay. <laughs> Ours do the same thing, especially when you're in a garden. She gets right under your feet. Yeah, what's that girl? Oh, you're so good. All right, well, we've got the sheep loaded and kind of had the tour and... We've talked each other's ear off about this, that, and everything else. And good things. The good things and local yeah. legends. And we'll talk, talk about that another time. But anyway, so we're going to get on down the road. But we really, really appreciate you showing us around. Awesome. And appreciate the, uh, the brotherhood of being in Greg Judy's presence and learning from him. And, and meeting somebody else doing the same thing that we're doing. That the rotating. And it's... It's uh, it's refreshing, is what it is. But, awesome. But we really do appreciate it, and yeah. uh, you know we're going to take good care of them. Oh, absolutely. And we hope to see you again, and for you know, sure. if we if we have another rooster up for up for grabs, maybe we can, <laughs> maybe, maybe we can meet up somewhere. <laughs> Only but, home centers drive an hour and a half for a free rooster. That's right. That's right. But they're good roosters. They're yeah, they're awesome so, roosters. That's yeah. right. That's a, Anyway, all right. Well, we're going to get on down the road, and we will. Uh, I guess we'll see you back home when we unload the sheep. Loki, come out. Extreme close-up. <laughs> Katie, Katie, Katie. All right, here we are a few hours later, uh, a couple rainstorms and some more rain coming in. So we <laughs> wanted to wrap this up for you. We want to show you the girls are doing absolutely wonderful. They're relaxed, they're eating grass. They got in there and they were yelling and the goats came up. So they had some four-legged friends nearby and you know, we'll leave them in the fence here for a few days to get used to us, get used to, you know, and we'll, we'll be moving him. Oh, yeah, of course we'll, we'll be, be moving him. We'll be moving him in the Premier One netting. We'll, we'll be moving him in our sleep and in the morning and in the <laughs> night and on and on. But anyway, so why are the Greg Judy sheep so important to us? Well, one, we're keeping them here separated. Um, we're not really worried about health issues, but it's a good idea to keep them separated uh, just to make sure there's no problems, but also so they can get used to us for about a week and a half, two weeks mm -hmm. before we put them up with everybody. Right. So... Um, but the reason we wanted these is, as y'all saw in the video, uh, the Greg Judy genetics, he had gone up to Greg Judy's the year before we did yeah. um, and had learned from Greg Judy a lot of the same things that we did and that we're, and they're doing the same things that we are. And he purchased a ram from Greg Judy and they are direct descendants from that ram that you saw in the video. Yep. So uh, we're really excited and I would love to get my hands on Greg Judy sheep and we've tried, 
but they've gone to auction now and people are spending over a thousand dollars if not more on greg judy sheep which is great it's definitely worth the money oh, yeah, absolutely but we can't afford it yeah. <laughs> so a friend sent me the ad from craigslist and said oh i've heard you talk about greg judy and sure enough so thanks Ange. Um, mm -hmm. But sure enough, uh, I contacted him and we talked for a while, made sure this wasn't a scam, <laughs> right? right? And uh, then we uh, we went and picked him up today. Um, they were born in March, so they've just been weaned. Yeah. So, but they're two ewes, so they will start to bring those genetics into our flock. Yeah. And and just in, in a real short capsule, Greg Judy has gone through the numbers with the sheep. He, you know, if if... He brought a, you know, a bunch of them in. If they are bad moms or hard, hard births or get worms or anything like that, they are out of the flock. He has gone through, so he's got he's got it narrowed down to a very gentle, uh, uh, parasite resistant flock. So you know he's done the work. So getting our hands on it is just it, it's amazing that we've had this opportunity and and mm -hmm. we got to meet Matt and I believe it's Sarah. I hope I'm right. Uh, wonderful people, very like-minded folks. We had a great, great morning and great time talking to them and seeing their place. And and hopefully we'll get to see them October 5th at our get together here in Burnsville, which you can also attend. Go to RenewedHomestead.com events and reserve your spot. That is coming up very quick. So looking yes. forward to meeting more of you. But anyway, you know, we wanted to show you the sheep. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big day for us. And now we've got the Greg Judy genetics in our flock. I know, which is exciting. It, and, uh... I don't know. We, how soon will we be able to breed them? How soon are they going to get? We, we'll wait till they're about a year old. Okay, so um, yeah, so it'll be it'll be next spring before uh, they get to meet up with Fabio, and then we get that uh, Saint Croix Saint Croix genetics in there, and I think we'll have something there. Yeah. So we're this is just a huge leap forward in our parasite resistant. Um, sheep you know parasite resistant flocks so yeah. um you know and it was great meeting people that are doing things the same way uh because it's been difficult to find yeah. sheep that are raised that are rotationally grazed and regeneratively raised so it's, it was exciting so we drove an hour and a half which really was nothing to get good genetics so yes. otherwise we'd be driving <laughs> five, five hours to missouri or whatever whatever oh, it was it took more to than get... that it was 17 oh, or 18 oh. whatever it was yeah it was a long it was a long drive, drive. worth every <laughs> Every, every mile, yes. every minute of it, it was worth it. Uh, so, yeah, and if you haven't seen, uh, if you're not following Greg Judy, I highly recommend it. I think it's a regenerative rancher, Greg Judy regenerative rancher. But I will put his um, channel in the description. Highly recommend watching it, especially if you're wanting to get into this space. Yep, yeah. sheep or cows. His, his, you saw, if you go back and watch our video, we're out there in a field of like 30 bulls, and they're just grazing right next to us. and licking the boot and keep on going so just gentle. gentle as everything so it, was, gentle. it was amazing that was a that was a great class and and it was fun being with somebody today that had been through the same class it's yeah it, it was same great. education so, same education there you go so all right well uh put the we're gonna yeah we'll have to tag these guys soon so what we do our our flock is getting large enough that we're gonna have to start tagging we don't want to lose track of <laughs> who's who <laughs> right I mean, exactly really. so, we'll bring you along when we do that but it's kind of exciting that we're at this point where we're now starting and we'll be processing um three sheep coming up we're going to take you along and kind of explain what we're doing because we're doing things a little bit different with that and why yep. um, but we'll do that in the next what week i think it's about a week away yeah week so, away it is yeah week from today yeah oh so, that's right yeah okay yeah, so. anyway uh yeah put in in the comments if you got questions um you know have you have you got to meet greg judy have you been out to his place do you know who he is and if you if you if you don't know him you need to look into him and if you don't know who joel Salatin is you need to look into him great 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 educators in this space and mm -hmm. and uh they will promise you they won't look at you like you're moving your cows every day? You're moving your sheep every day? Because <laughs> right. we get a lot of strange looks. And we say, well, we move them every other day. And they're like, why? Yeah. That's a whole different conversation. So <laughs> anyway, all right. Please make sure you subscribe and give us a thumbs up. It helps us a lot. And you know, we appreciate your feedback. And, uh, you know, we appreciate your prayers. And you know we're praying for you. So I guess... Uh, We'll wrap it up here. You guys take care. God bless. We'll see you all in the next video. Bye, Bye everybody.